Hi my Rockworld fans, we are tonight in Munich at the Ampere Club and uh, have an exclusive interview with Gary Clark Jr., the blues rock, blues rock superstar from USA. And uh, first, welcome Thank to you. Munich, Gary, and uh, gratulations to your Grammy, Thank which you. you got in January, I January, think. January, yes. This is pretty cool. It's a great way to start the year. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're played with everybody. You played with the Stones, you played with B.B. King, you played with Eric Clapton, you played with lots of superstars in America yeah. on every stage uh, we can imagine. So this is, uh, you, you played uh, in Germany too, but uh, you're starting up, building up your fan base in Germany. So mm -hmm. tell us something about your history uh, a little bit, four or five sentences, and then we go to the Black and Blue album. Yeah, well, I uh, grew up in Austin, Texas. Um, nice music town. I was introduced to great musicians uh, in my teenage years. Uh, a couple of them being Jimmy Vaughn and Doyle Bramho in the second. And they introduced me to uh, Eric Clapton, who invited me to his Crossroads Guitar Festival in 2010 in Chicago, where I met people from my label Warner Brothers and recorded an album Black and Blue, and that's where we are. <laughs> oh, cool. So uh, the first album. Uh Uh, it's called Black and Blue, and it's a mixture of uh, rhythm and blues, blues rock, soul. Yeah. Uh, everybody says it's a little bit Hendrix, uh, but uh, I think it's not not uh, reduced to Hendrix. Mm. Um, so uh, you did this, and this was a big success. Tell us something about the album. How did the songs come? Uh, some uh, songs came together, and how come the band together? Which is your tour band too, I think. Mm. Well, uh, the songs came together. I started writing songs for Black and Blue a long time ago. So okay. a couple of them I had, and I've been performing for a while. Uh, just kind of about my experiences as a young man in Austin, Texas. A little bit of traveling that I'd done at the time. Um, then I worked in the studio with Mike Elizondo, as a producer, mm -hmm. and Rob Cavallo as a producer, and I had uh, Zapata who plays Famous guitar names. with me. Uh, he was on the album. J.J. Johnson played drums in the record. And uh, um, Scott Nelson played bass on the album. Mike Elizondo played bass. We got some guys from L.A. to fill in the, the, the gaps and add some colors. Um, but the writing process was just kind of sitting around thinking, playing at my house. I had drums, bass, guitars, keys everything on my room so okay. I would just play everything and make demos and then bring it to the guys who oh, could this play is the cool. instruments yeah. better than okay. me so uh, that's how that but you had out. a vision in the in your head how the songs should sound mm. because there are different sounds on the album well, really different sounds yeah I think that just comes from my influence musically as a mm -hmm. young kid my dad was really into funk and mm -hmm. blues and okay. R&B so there was Motown going on yeah. in my house and Prince yeah. to Johnny Guitar Watson okay. and then my friends you know from all different walks of life I lived in a nice diverse neighborhood so they were listening to punk rock and they were listening to Guns N' Roses so we had a lot Metallica of different and influences and Nirvana and yeah. Rolling Stones and the Beatles yeah. and, uh, and hip hop was a big influence on me too so uh, I just kind of You know, in my mind, I, I wanted to mix it all up on the first record. Yeah. And not put myself in a box, I guess. Yeah, because, you're right. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't have a problem with genres and doing a certain thing a certain way, but I just love music so much. Yeah. That I just That's it. wanted to just yeah. experiment with it yeah. and have fun. And, yeah. And, and you had the freedom myself. to do it. Right, yeah. Well, Which is rare. Yeah, I played my, my uh, demos for people at the label around this big table and The kind of the meeting kind of finished. Was it so right in the old days? You you you, you played it. And yeah, and, and ten my, people were sitting yeah, at a table. Sitting around and I'm just playing them all my stuff and I'm sweating and I'm <laughs> nervous. <laughs> that is cool. And uh, and they said, well, you're kind of all over the place, huh? I said, yeah, I, I am. And so well, I hope that's okay because I don't really know how what else to do. I just kind of do it all and let it flow through me naturally and 
I feel like if I was to filter or say, well, I can't do that because that's not what people would expect from me, and then I'd be making myself unhappy. Yeah. Which, you know, I play music because it makes me happy, so why would yeah. I... And this is what, what you makes you so authentic, mm. in, in, my, in my view, uh, because you're, you're not... Uh, be a prince or, or, or a Jimi Hendrix or something uh, guy which you can't be because right, right, right. there is a prince and there was a Jimi Hendrix. Exactly, and you know, and I did the whole traditional blues thing. Yeah, but you know, you can't recreate Freddie King. That's you know, it. I would love to be Freddie That's King, but it. he That's was already Freddie King. That's it. You know, so, so um, you got the Grammy in January. You started a great year. You did a lot of tour. Mm -hmm. What is the plan for 2014? Is there a next album planned, or what? What? What are the really the, the plans for you? Um, well, I think I'm going to give up everything and become a trumpet player. I think that's a good decision. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I do try and play trumpet a little bit, but uh, for me working on a new album spent a little bit of time in the studio trying to get all my ideas together so you want to make a second album oh of course you have uh, already already written songs uh, for that yeah written a, a few songs but it's hard to write on the road now I spent so much time that is why I asked you the question yeah so it's so we, act, uh, the, we expect a new album in 2020 or when 2020 uh, what do you think I'm not quite sure. I'm I'm in the pro I'm excited about it. I'm ready to play some new music and, and share some new ideas with people. So uh, you know. So that means you give yourself the time to develop and do the second album whenever you want to do it. Is that right? Um, or is there a pressure that you have to do it until this year or something? There's only pressure when you ask me if there's a new record. Then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But no yeah. further questions. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's it's coming. It's coming. I promise. Um, what uh, can we expect from the show tonight? Um, a mix of blues, soul, rock and roll, funk. Is yeah. it uh, a set list which is fixed, or do you change the set list often? Um, it depends. You know, um, I used to not write set lists. Oh, but uh, I figured that wasn't really the most professional thing to do is have the guys on stage going, what are we going to do next? So there's a, there's a nice little blueprint as to what we're going to do, but things always change. It depends on the crowd okay. and how we're feeling as a band and what the people want. So you decided on the stage to change a song or to leave a song away? And mm -hmm. Yeah, really? Yeah. This is cool. Yeah. So I try not to... I, I feel like it becomes stagnant or boring if everybody knows what to expect. So I'll throw some curveballs in there every now and then. Cool. It up. This, this sounds pretty cool. <laughs> this is what I love about music because this is more a chess thing, you know. The chess guys go on stage and they play right. because they want to have the feeling and to have the feeling with themselves and the feeling goes over to the crowd and it combines and then it's developing music. Right. Well, that's how I started off playing in Austin, is getting up on stage with people that I didn't know, yeah. hadn't played with before. Jam. And yeah, just jamming. And yeah. You call out a key, you call yeah. out a, a chord progression, you call out the, the groove, and you just play. Yeah. So that's how I learned. You know, this four is, hours of, of This is what I love. And so that's, yeah. that's pretty much the only way I know how to do it. As you uh, have met uh, and played with a lot of uh, famous uh, rock musicians and blues rock and blues musicians, mm -hmm. what were your heroes starting to out of a music career? What are you really the, the heroes where you said, I have to do this? My first concert was Michael Jackson's Bad Tour when okay. I was five. So that was exciting for me as a kid. I'd never seen anything like that. I'd never been to a concert before. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what it was. So that one changed my life. And because you wanted at the end where he goes in the rocket, you wanted to fly the rocket. No, no? it wasn't so much about the rocket. It was what we were talking about, yeah. the energy, mm -hmm. the crowd, and, and you know, making people happy and 
bringing people from all yeah. over, you know, all different backgrounds. It doesn't yeah. matter what it is. Everyone was coming to have a good time. So this was a big influence for you to start a music career? Yeah. And then, Who else? And then um, my friend Eve Monse, she played guitar before I did. And she got me interested in uh, playing guitar. She had a black Stratocaster and a Fender Twin Amp, and she would just jam, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so she got me interested in that. And being from Austin, Texas, the name Stevie Ray Vaughan started floating around. Sure. So I got the Texas Flood album, and then from there, started to learn about uh, Albert King, Freddie King, BB King, yeah. and so on and so forth. And Have you saw all of them live? I hadn't seen any of them. But but you, you you saw them live in the in, in in your days when you started it, or you, you didn't have the possibility to, to see them live on stage? No, I didn't have the possibility. I was too young, really. Okay. So all these guys had passed away before I started playing guitar. Okay. So um, I started playing two years after Albert King passed away. Okay. Yeah. So because I saw him, you know, I, I, yeah, I yeah. missed all that, but. With um, you know the education I got at this blues club, Antones, uh, speaking with guys in the house band like George Rains and you know Chris Layton, Tommy Shannon, Derek O'Brien, Riley Osborne, like these guys would back up you know, Muddy Waters, and Buddy Guy, and Albert Collins when they came through. So uh, they'd share stories. From from the guitar players, is it Freddie King, which has a lot of influence I love to your Freddie sound? King. Because I think sometimes mm -hmm. when you do this kind of classic blues, mm. I hear in, in my uh, feeling, yeah. I hear a lot of uh, Freddie King I love style. That. I love Freddie. Yeah, King. yeah. I mean, I heard "Have You Ever Loved a Woman" in San Jose, and that was about For it. Sure. I mean, you know. Yeah. Is there anything you haven't done yet musically and you think one day I really love to do that? Mm, musically? Playing trumpet. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, nothing specific. I'm just open to all the possibilities, like I said. Music to me is one of the most three forms of expression ever, so... Okay, uh, last question. Mm. Please tell us some secrets, or one secret, or a funny secret about Gary Clark nobody knows. Well, then it wouldn't be a secret anymore. Uh, hmm. Uh, well, going back to the Michael Jackson thing. Okay. I really wanted to be like him and dance like him and sing like him. So when I was a kid, I used to put flashlights in my <laughs> in my socks. Really? Turn the lights off and just dance around in the dark. <laughs> That's a very cool secret. Thank you. I should have <laughs> kept that in mind. <laughs> At least some words to your fans, please. Oh, well, just thank you for all the support. You know, I wouldn't be in a position to travel around the world with the band and these guys and play music and and uh, do what I love to do if it weren't for them coming out to shows and listening to my music. So I'm just very grateful. Thank you. Great last words. Thank you, Gary Clark. Yeah. Have a great concert. Thank you. <laughs>